Today, I'm gonna to show you how to kill bed bugs instantly if you're in a van life van conversion or if you're just inside of a normal house. So you're gonna learn how to naturally kill bed bugs within five to six hours. So I'm Ryan Bell and this is my 2002 Ford E150 that I'm gonna be living in for the next two years until I buy my future sailboat. So I personally started getting bitten after I got bed bugs in my van from the Marriott Hotel that I was working at. One of the rooms probably like had a traveler that brought the bed bug in on his like suitcase or something. But this had been like the most annoying problem I've ever had to deal with in this van. And I've researched everything from pesticides to DE, you know, to heat treatments from all my studies. It only appears that the only thing that works is heat treatments mixed with pesticides. But I came up a way to skip with the pesticides. This is a bed bug. These things are one of the toughest bugs to eliminate. Bed bugs can infest anyone's house or van. Being dirty has nothing to do with it. Bed bugs are amazing hitchhikers, and they latch onto your clothing while you're around them, and they hold on for the ride back to where you sleep. Then they hide and set up camp in your home. You are almost 100% sure to get bed bugs at least once in your lifetime. Like I said, they are tough to get rid of. Some people have them for years. Others might not even know they have them because they might not even react to the chemicals that shoot into you while you're sleeping. Don't worry though, no one has ever gotten a disease from these little pests. Chemical pesticides have been shown not to work for bed bugs, except on contact. Spraying where you think they will travel though does not usually work. Look at your chemical spray bottle. Somewhere in the small print you might see kills on contact. That means you need to shoot them directly. Diatomaceous earth and other powders will help but it will not fix the entire problem alone. It will only make the bed bugs move to a different place, further scattering your problem. There are lots of product on the market that say they mess with the receptors of the bed bugs, put a shield around you, or that they keep killing for days. But one look at these reviews will show you that these are empty promises. In my opinion, the only real solution is a heat treatment, which involves heating the infected room up to a temperature that the bed bugs get fried at which is around 117 degrees Fahrenheit. But heat can also freak out the bed bugs and make them move to a cooler place if you heat up the room too fast. That's why professionals mix heat treatments with chemicals to kind of block off where the bed bugs might move to. They spray it all around the corners and crevices that the bugs are likely to try and escape the heat. Professionally, heat treatments can cost well over $1,000. And if they don't work, you're out of luck with that lost money. I didn't want to lose money, so I sat around and thought, how could I do the heat treatment myself? And it turns out you can get everything you need at Home Depot or Lowe's. If you have a small enough van, even without a small van, or you might be in a house too, I'll cover it all for you guys, and it'll only cost you around $20 to $250 total from these places, depending on how you go about it. Work smart, guys. Let's get started. So since we're on a van that can fit into a garage, the heat treatment can be administered inside the garage, which will affect the entire van. Now, if your van is too big or if you have a house, you know, you can stick around for the end of the video. I'll give you some more options. Since I was back visiting my parents, getting ready to slow travel through Florida and probably be gone for the next two years, I really wanted the bugs out of my van. I didn't want them biting me this entire time. For this heat treatment, you are gonna need a propane tank and a forced air propane space heater from Home Depot or Lowe's. If you already have both of these, it'll only cost you $20 to exchange your propane tank for a new one. First, move your van into the garage and remove any combustibles that might be in the garage or inside of your van. So you wanna have your fire extinguishers handy when you're monitoring the room. Place a CO detector anywhere in the room. CO is lighter than air, but it disperses evenly throughout so it'll work wherever you put it. Next, move all your bedding around so the heat is quick to penetrate. Your bed is like a gigantic piece of insulation, which will keep the objects inside and around it cooler for longer. Okay, so set up your burner under the garage door like this, pointed at an empty space. Use blocks of wood to make like an air barrier to keep the in heat inside the garage. What we're gonna do is cover that with uh, the blankets. If you were to just put the heater inside the garage, by the way, the oxygen would be used up, causing lots of carbon monoxide to build up, and then the oxygen would finally be depleted, causing a burnout, meaning the room would then fill up with propane gas, the heater's not burning it, 
that would be very dangerous. So we put the space heater over here and then um, a space right here to let some of the air escape. So then um, we have an airflow. The air is going in here and part of the air is coming out here. Um, and with the airflow, it allows new oxygen to come in. So make sure you have the hose tightened into your propane bottle and also for your propane heater. So you wanna disconnect the garage and then let it drop down onto the barrier that we made. And you see we covered in that spot with a little rag and all the way across. And there's a little gap right there. There was still a gap above the garage door so we used painter sheets so the air wouldn't escape from the top. Mine says to plug it in first which will turn on the electronics and then you want to turn on the propane and then what you're going to do hold down this on the first level for 30 seconds now it's all the way on so I'm going to put it up to 2 and then to 3 now it's all the way up. You can see what I was doing right there. I'm gonna move the propane away a little bit. In the comments below, tell me how you got rid of your bug problem in your van, whether it be bed bugs or anything. So here, we're actually heating it up now. The burner is on right here, and we have this fan, which uh, the, the air from that is coming over here and into the fan and going in here. Uh, which will heat up that quicker as well. Um, temperatures will actually be hotter on the ceiling, of course, than on the floor. So what you want to do is wait until at least the floor of the van, or the bugs probably might be, you want to wait until that's at least 117. But wait, you should maybe wait up for an hour before you turn off the burner uh, once it's at that temperature, just to make sure that all the bugs are gone. So I put a thermometer right there and down on the ground right here, you can't see it. And then there's one up inside the electronics. So we've switched propane tanks to this one now. Uh, that one started getting cold, you can see there's frost on it. One thing I noticed when I got to the end of the tank, it started going a little bit slower and the flame inside died down a little bit. What I did, I picked this up and just shook it around and it seemed to actually make the flame strong again. I don't know why, but that's what happened. So it started around 4 p.m. and ended at 7.30. Notice how we only got up to temperature around 6.30 to 6.45. I changed the tank right at around 5.45 to 6 o'clock because the temperature started increasing. It stayed around 104 for a long time. So it's been three and a half hours since we started. We just ended it. Um, as you see, the bed and all that stuff's up there. Heat rises, so I put it up there so it would get a little bit warmer. Now, uh, one thing I noticed was that the heat, uh, I was about five degrees hotter in the front where the burner was than at the back over here, but it still got up to about 120 down here. It got up to 130 right here, and at the top, or I, I know it uh, would have gotten up to like 140. I told you I was gonna tell you how to do it if you're in a house or a van that's too big for the garage. What you wanna do is open one of the doors, put your sheets away, put the burner there, uh, put the propane on the outside and then have like a crack or a window or a vent open just anything um, That allows oxygen to come in, but still is small enough not to let all the air out try to make sure it's down low um, where the crack is but um you just heat up the, the inside of the van or the inside of the house. Now in a house, it's a little bit different. Um, keep a window open, of course, uh, around it, uh, maybe inside the room that you're doing it, but around the room maybe, um, and just cover the doorway with a um, blanket or sheet and to keep the, the heat in, and it will get hot enough. Yeah, thank you guys, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.